Justin Bieber is heading to jail. Justin Bieber is literally heading to jail. Taylor Swift is digging into the vault. And Demi Lovato, I didn't see part two and one of your documentary. And we're going to talk about all of that right here in the green chair. You already know what time it is. It's going down. Basement. Man of death, man of death, now I'm blessed. Life is sour, then it's sweet, like the lemon with the zest. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. That was four hellos. Hello. Maybe three or four. Whatever. Either way, hi, everybody. My name is Courtney Revolution, your homie sexual, and welcome to a kiki with Mimi, home of the green chair chats, home of speculation, not confirmation. Hello to all of the rebels of the revolution. This is the pop culture kiki that you have been missing. And if you want to join the discussion, all you have to do is chat live in the chat. If you're watching live, subscribe, leave a comment below. It's all part of the beautiful ecosystem, if you will. Um, hi, everybody. Make sure that you put some green hearts and some crystal balls in the chat. You are ready to get into all of the hot goss that we have going down today. Um, before we even get started, first of all, I already have a note in the script. Um, light dose of caramel dolce, because I feel like I've been saying dolce this whole time, which apologies. You gave me the gift that keeps on giving with that super chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you so, so, so much. I don't think, oh wait, it is here. I'm gonna leave that up for just a moment. Y'all, thank you so much. And all the different ways that you guys support the show, it is all seen and appreciated. And just know that I love you, whether you pop in and out or you watch after work or you watch a little bit here, a little bit there. And then right before bed, you finish me up because y'all know I'm long-winded and I talk my ass off for the whole hour. I appreciate you. I love you. And I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But tell me where you're watching from. As always, tell me what time it is because I'd love to figure out what time y'all be watching me. If you're really like a morning riser or maybe you're like a right before you pull the blanket over your head kind of girl, let me know um, what time it is, where you're watching from. Y'all know I love all that good information. Y'all know I'm a little bit nosy. But uh, we got Corinna saying good morning, afternoon rebels, Corny Revolution at Mr. Makeshift. That's fantastic news. I believe I saw Mr. Makeshift is very excited about that Taylor Swift song that is coming on out of the, the vault, y'all. We're going to talk about that a little bit later today. We also have some, let's put uh, Miss Dulce back up there. Um, we have some Justin Bieber news. Yeah, we got Justin Bieber news. We have to talk about Demi Lovato. If y'all haven't seen the documentary and you were waiting for me to tell you a little bit about it to decide whether or not you're actually going to tune in, I've got that for you. I remember talking about it and you guys were like, I'll just wait for you to watch it. Um, so I definitely did that for you guys. Check that out. We've got some Real Housewives news. Y'all know I love a good Real Housewives moment. Bam. Um, it's a good show today. It's Wednesday, right? It is Wednesday, right? We're just trying to get through the week, y'all. We're almost there. And we're going to make it um, you and me and whoever else is watching with you. Or maybe it's just you and me. Either way, we're going to make it. Like the good old song on Degrassi says, whatever it takes, um, I know I can make it through. And your ass can make it through, too. Shout out to Christina. It is jo uh, from Georgia, 1215. We've got Angie saying, hey, Courtney, I'm watching from Mexico. 1015, I'm normally an after watcher. I'm just glad I made it today. Well, shout out to you. Miss Angie, ooh, shout out to Tegan, hey Tegan, uh, lots of green hearts, lots of crystal balls, I wish the show was two hours, it's rejuvenating, it's 12 p.m. here in ATL, Tegan, I don't know if I have it in me to go two hours, I, you know, I see, um, a lot of the popular YouTubers that used to inhabit this website, they've moved on to Twitch. And a lot of those uh, Twitch streamers, they'd be streaming for 12 hours. Y'all want me up here talking shit for two hours? I couldn't imagine. But I appreciate um, that you would enjoy that time if we were um, to be here for two hours. Maybe one day. Maybe I'll figure out a reason um, to be up here for two hours and we will... We'll figure it out. Oh, we'll see. We'll see. Shout out to Carmen, 1815 here in South Africa. Shout out to South Africa. Shout out to anyone that is watching not in America. Um, if you're new, I live in America. I live in sunny Los Angeles. Can't see the sun because I keep the blinds shut so that the lighting is even and y'all can see my beautiful chocolate skin. Shout out to Kat, watching from Miami, watching with my cat blush. Pew, pew. 
Good morning to you, Blush. Yes. And we got our girl, uh, where she went? 901 Erica, watching from my bed in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, 901 Erica. There is, you may, maybe you've seen it, The Amanda Show. If you guys have seen The Amanda Show, there's this um, this sketch that is literally one of my favorites called The Girls' Room. And like each girl in the girls' room had like a thing that they said. Most notably is Debbie because Debbie's like, I like eggs. But there was always um, a young lady on The Girls' Room that was like, my name is blah, 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 and I'm from Tennessee. So whenever you say you're from Memphis, Tennessee, I think of that woman's name from the girls' room. Sorry if that's weird, um, but I love Amanda Bynes, um, and I love the girls' room, so shout out to that. Uh, Megan is saying, I could listen to you for two hours. Oh, my God, y'all. I'm not even a phone person. Like, I hate talking on the phone. This, I could do, but like, talking on the phone, I could never. So shout out to you guys um, for wanting to listen to me. Hmm. Shout out to y'all. Okay. <gasps> Tegan is, oh, Tegan, girl, you ain't even talking to me. Bella is <laughs> currently in the hospital at 1017, but I'm still here. Bella, I'm glad to have you here, and I won't hold you up any longer so that this show actually is not two hours. I know that sometimes we run a little bit long here, but let's kick things off. Most times, I like to start off if there is abundant or relevant Real Housewives news to me. I'm going to share it with you guys. So first up, we have the Real Housewives of New York trailer. It is finally here. Um, just a preface, I think I'm all the way up to season 10, maybe, of Real Housewives of New York. I'm trying to catch up. It's one of the newer franchises that I started watching last year. Um, it's just a lot, a lot to get through. Um, and there are definitely slow seasons that will make you not want to watch anymore, but I'm still on the trail and we have this trailer from season 13. And to be honest, you guys, I'm here for it. It looks like it is high drama and it is actually making me want to end the show after this and then go and watch to be truthful. Now, as I said, Bravo released a trailer and it is not low on the drama. If you guys watched the show, I told you guys about Ebony K. Williams. She is the new black Real Housewife in New York. She has an apple and she's not afraid to use it. Now, this newcomer is calling out the OG, Ramona. Now, let's get these two up on the court camp. Bam! There goes Ebony and Ramona. And, you know, it seems like they're butting heads. I'm going to show you just a, a little bit of something from the trailer in a minute. And it doesn't involve uh, Ebony and uh, Miss Ramona. But if you watch the show, you know that Ramona is very obnoxious. She's very opinionated. Um, and she's definitely not afraid to say what's on her mind, no matter how ignorant it may come across. Now, in the trailer, you see Luann, a different housewife, declaring that she likes Ebony, but then you sort of hear Ebony <laughs> say that she has like a degree and she's the most educated person sitting at the table and Luann was not having that at all. All. And also, something different, um, you guys, just to be candid, something that I am excited about to see from Real Housewives of New York, just as the, just, I'm, to be a person that was born in New York and grew up half my life in New York, it was always very strange to me that there were never Black people on Real Housewives of New York, much like um, The Hills, Los Angeles. There's more, um, black people, people of color, Hispanics than white people, but we never saw any of that. So I'm very interested to see how um, these white cast members act and react to Ebony. I'm interested, you guys. I have a clip from the trailer between, uh, it's just a quick clip of Ebony and Luann um, about what I was telling you just now about Ebony saying she's educated, making it seem as though um, she's the most educated woman at the table, getting Luann and the rest of the women together. I'm going to play that for y'all. Just a little, just a teaspoon. I have more education, frankly, than anybody at this table. Don't come into my house and tell me I don't have an education. Well, I can leave your house, Lou. I can leave your house. She didn't do all of that. I can leave your house, Lou. Period. I've been waiting for these kinds of conversations, these kinds of moments. Ramona referring to um, the people helping her out in her home as the help. Whew. Y'all, we're going to get into it this um, season. I'm going to catch up so that I can keep you guys updated about it and with it. I don't know. I'm feeling it. I have a good feeling about it. What you guys talking about in the chat? Loa is saying Ramona is one of the worst, most entitled and white privileged housewives there are. Loa, I must admit, um, 
Watching, when you initially first start watching Real Housewives of New York, Ramona is very grating. I think that she has likable um, traits here and there, but for the most part, if you're not um, able to just watch it for entertainment and not feel attachment to these people, these characters, what have you, you will be exhausted. Believe that. Um, <laughs> Patricia is saying, I heard there's another woman of color coming onto the season later. Look at you, Patricia. Look at you, because I'm actually about to talk about one right now. Now, in addition to Ebony, we have another new woman of color, black woman, cast member, Brashawn Shaw. And I told you guys about her as well. And this is what she told E! News at the top of March. She says, I'm thankful to be part of the Bravo team and I'm thrilled about the diversity and inclusion this season brings. I am a warrior for all people and so are the ladies. All right. I'm here for it. And we do get to see um, Brashawn and Ebony sort of interact. I like it, you guys. I feel like this is a better representation of Housewives in New York. And that's why I wanted to bring this to you guys today. I'm here for it. Good job, Bravo. And uh, let's move into something else that I think that you guys will like. <laughs> and let me know what you guys think about this situation and how you would feel if you were in this situation. This is a story about our girl. You know that we love Sweetie here, right? I see. And we know that Sweetie has gone through this breakup with Mr. Quavo. We know that there's been a little bit of drama, whether Quavo took the car back or not. And there also was like some random rapper that we never heard of ever, like on Instagram, making it seem like he was with Sweetie and she had to shut that down, y'all. It was great. But um, Sweetie, it seems, let's get her up on the court cam. Sweetie, it seems, I'll say this. I felt like she was very honest about something that happened to her in her past and how it affected her and her career. So let's get into it. Now, recently, Sweetie is on the cover of uh, Cosmopolitan, actually the April issue, and she touched on her botched freestyle on Hot 97 in 2018, which ultimately left her with PTSD from the whole thing. Now, this is what she said. She says, it was a really dark point in my life. I went from being so loved so quickly because of Icy Girl which was um, sort of like one of her first viral hits, can't stop, won't stop, get guap, um, to on my first promo run, well, you saw the interview, the script flipped really quick, like night and day. I was like, wait, I had PTSD from that. Now, what the situation was, you guys, was she went on Hot 97 and after confidently proclaiming that she was a freestyle rapper to Ebro, Laura, and uh, Peter Rosenberg, Sweetie delivered a performance that most might describe as subpar. Um, and this sort of prompted Ebro to be um, critical, critical, and I'll even go as far as to say a little bit constructive about her rap performance. Now, if you're watching this right now and you're kind of like, well, Courtney, what did the performance sound like? I have just a little bit of a clip for you because I, I don't want the girls to snatch it down, but I want y'all to see. There's a big difference between Sweetie in 2018 and Sweetie, who's on Best Friend, which a lot of us are still playing into the ground today. So get into this and let me know what you think. Me, I be minding my own biz, but they check up on me like a parent does they kid. Mm. Okay, so even if you love Sweetie, I think that we can admit that there is a difference between the Sweetie that we have today that we know and love, the icy girl, confident woman leaving Quavo, and the young lady that we just saw in that um, in that music video. I see y'all already. Sandra is saying, oh my God, that was not good. Tamara is saying, Sweetie looks different every time I see her, LOL, but she's pretty. I agree, Tamara. And I feel like um, I choose pictures and assets like that on purpose. I want y'all to see like different sides to the people that we talk about on the show. I'm glad that you guys um, noticed that. What you talking about, Keisha? Keisha is saying, Ebro is a beast and that rap was sorry, especially if you say you're a freestyle rapper. Now, Keisha, I hear you. Let's get into some of, I think I have the comments that Ebro said specifically. Now, he said, I just thought the raps were basic. I think you need to get sharper on your diction, your clarity, and your content if you're going to impress me. Now, like I said, 
when Sweetie first came out, she had the Icy Girl song and she had gone viral. People were living for her. It was like somebody different. But as soon as this happened, and I think there was like a double XL um, sort of uh, moment very similar to this that happened. And the girl, they keep ripping it off the internet. I'm not even mad at it because if I were her, I would have them rip it down too. But I feel like um, this situation helped her grow. Have y'all ever been in a situation where someone was very critical of your work, your art, or your performance, and in the moment you may have been like, wow, what a jerk, or like, what a a-hole, or like, ugh, that person was so annoying. And then maybe a year later, two years down the line, you may have been like, okay, well, they weren't all the way wrong, right? Um, I think that Sweetie has learned a lot from this because I feel like ever since that time period, she has kind of worked overtime to sort of put her reputation back up into the positive area. And I feel like she's been successful in that. Now, I do want to say that Ebro has responded to her coming out in this article and speaking about it. Um, and he said, you want to rap and it's just cool. We going to tell you. So happy for her success, but that doesn't mean we can be dishonest about freestyles. Love, sweetie, though. So, I mean, he wasn't exactly mean. That was over at the Neighborhood Talk, by the way. Um, he wasn't exactly mean. In my opinion, I felt like Ebro was being constructive. What do you guys think? Okay, now, let me scroll up, girl. <laughs> well, Patricia is saying, what do you mean Ebro was constructive? Okay, let me explain. Okay, so there's a difference, you guys, between me saying, sweetie, girl, that rap was garbage. Girl, get out of here. You can't rap. You only look good on Instagram. Da -da 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 -da. That is not constructive. Constructive is what Ebro said. I think that you need to work on your clarity. I think you need to work on your diction. I think you need to work on your content. I think that she would, maybe he was saying, I think that you would be a more interesting rapper if these things were improved on. Do you see the difference versus something that is just an opinion versus something that's a little bit more constructive? I admit that if I were Sweetie Girl, Listen, I'll tell y'all right now. I'm the person, I get nervous, I get the sweats. Y'all get the sweats? Girl, I thank God she was wearing black. Was she wearing black, y'all? I think she was wearing black because y'all would have seen the sweat stains, y'all. I would have been so embarrassed and I'm sure it was an embarrassing time for her. And I do believe that the PTSD was real. But you know what that PTSD, hopefully, maybe, speculation, not confirmation, did? It made her uh, get up in that kitchen or that studio, that booth, that car, wherever she likes to write and create. And it helped her put out uh, better material, different content. Hey, I am mad at it. You guys see the difference? Mm. Keisha is saying Ebro is a producer too, right? He is harsh on everyone. I think that even though I'm not a person that's normally receptive to tough love, I think that the um, I think that the criticism was constructive, and I'm sure that Sweetie went and uh, did what she needed to do. Look, we got hits now, right? I'm not mad at it. Keisha saying also, and the other host actually laughed, which was wrong, and I agree. Um, I think that the constructive criticism may have been unintentionally embarrassing for Sweetie, but the laughing, when you laugh at somebody and they're trying to, and she was, I really felt like she was like giving her best. Um, that's the part that I was like, ugh. Mm. Okay, Sandra is also saying, I think he was being honest. I didn't find him to be mean. Yeah, and his delivery about it was nice, y'all, to be honest. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, Vanessa's joining us. Hey, Vanessa. Good morning, Rebels. About to make my lunch while I listen to the tea. Well, Vanessa, eat something good for us. What you eating, girl? Evie is... <laughs> Evie, you silly. Evie said, PTSD straight to that bank. And you know... I know that's right. <laughs> she sure did. I see. Oh, Sweetie's one of the girls I would love to interview because I feel like she's interesting and she has an interesting story and I feel like she's a lot of fun. Um, so shout out to her. We talk about her here, but I like Miss Sweetie. Don't get it twisted. Mm. Now, shifting gears onto a couple that um, they're making headlines, you guys. And I feel it's very important um, to discuss, maybe not so much them, but the, the issue, the issue, the issue. Now, your favorite TikTokers <laughs> have broken up and it is very sad and it is very devastating. Miss Addison Ray and Bryce Hall are donezo. They're finished, you guys. They are d Addison Ray giving us Bryce Hall. I don't know what he does. I imagine he does a little of this. 
they're done. Um, and it's very, very sad. Allow me to tell you the tale. Now, <laughs> the TikTok sensations have officially called it quits. They have split up amid cheating rumors. Now, a source told Us Weekly that Addison broke up with Bryce. She feels that he has a lot of growing up to do and that he brings too much drama into her life. They're so on and off, though, so don't be surprised if they get back together at some point. Now, this news comes out after Bryce was accused of cheating on Addison in Las Vegas last month. Girl, they even got the location. Addison confirmed the breakup herself when she referred to him as her ex-boyfriend during an interview with Apple Music's Zane Lowe. And y'all know I love me some Zane Lowe. Shout out to him. Now, if you guys remember, I told y'all about Miss Addison Ray's song, Obsessed, <laughs> okay? Um, and this is what she said talking about it. She said, so the night recording this, I was driving right before the studio. I had dropped off my ex-boyfriend, my boyfriend at the time. He looked at me and was like, I'm obsessed with you. And I was like, me too. <laughs> Y'all, I'm sorry. That's not funny, but like, it is. So <laughs> Bryce was a little petty and I'm not mad at it. He kind of cryptically addressed the split when he tweeted, the petty is real. And then he's proceeded to leave it alone. So this is what I'm thinking, you guys. Firstly, do you think that the split is real? There's something in that article that is leading me to believe that this is a stunt, that this is a scheme, that this is something. And the reason why is because it is not out of the realm of possibility. Um, professional actors do this too. When they get in a big movie role or something that's really gonna shine a light on them, they want to be single. They don't want to be attached to the other big name that they may be dating. So maybe Bryce Hall cheated, maybe he did. Um, but there's something in the article that was like, they're on and off again all the time. Girl, she gonna drop Bryce ass and as soon as this movie come out with Kourtney Kardashian, he's all that. As soon as she get up there and do all that, then she gonna get right back together with Bryce and they gonna be the power couple again. Uh, Ang Angelina and Brad, girl, um, back in the day, back in the day, Angie, back in the day, back in the day, back in the day, not current day, back in the day. But um, that's what I think. What are you guys thinking? Evie is saying, obsessed with fame, more like it, children sit down. I mean, hey, in this day and age, once you're 20, because I mean, Addison Ray is like 20 now. Once you hit like a certain age, I mean, you have to just do whatever you want to do. Some people choose college. Some people choose, uh, what, tech school. Some people decide that they want to be influencers. Hey, I am mad at it. But I do find it very interesting that in the article, they made sure to mention that they're on and off again. Y'all watch, right after this movie, they gonna get right back together. I really think that this is PR. What you saying, Wesley? Wesley saying, driving alone past the street? That's what the gal was doing? <laughs> what is the play? <laughs> Mr. Makeshift said, oh, so she cut him off. Okay, good song and do better moving forward. Do y'all like Obsessed? Let's talk about it real quick before we move on. Do y'all like the Addison Rae song, Obsessed? Because I've been hearing mixed things. We talked about it here on the show. I feel it's okay. It's just not, it is not all the way for me. And I've also heard the critique that if someone else were singing the song, maybe I would enjoy it. Like if Selena sang I'm Obsessed, I might enjoy it a little bit more. And maybe, I don't know. I don't know how y'all feel about it. <laughs> y'all are mad. <laughs> the cat is saying, LOL, no. No. <laughs> cat is saying it's cheesy cheese. I think that that's what it is. It's cheese. That's her thing is like, me, 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 too. It's not. <laughs> Let me stop y'all for in two years, I come out with a song and all these clips resurface and y'all try to drag me. But you know, okay, hero. Here we go. Haro, you getting into it. Haro is saying, no, feels like an off-brand Selena. Y'all think? Hmm. Y'all think, what y'all think about that? Is Obsessed trying to channel Selena too much? Is that is that the disconnect? What if Selena and Addison Rae uh, work together one day? I'm not saying soon, but what if they work together musically? Would y'all be annoyed? I don't think I'll be annoyed, but I sure would be curious. What you saying, Wesley? Wesley's saying, obsessed. We only know Mariah's obsessed. We don't know about no Miss Ray. Hell to the nah. Boy, why are you so obsessed? Ah, 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 ah. Shout out to all the lambs watching. Um, <laughs> shout out to Mariah. Oh my God, y'all are best. Jennifer said, no. Christina is saying the song just is okay, but the video was embarrassing. The girl is famous for dancing on TikTok, but her dancing was not good in the music video. 
Christy. Christina, you are the MVP today. Okay, that was my big, oh my God, the biggest critique of Addison Ray's Obsessed. If you are known for the you should the whole damn music video should have been choreography. The little bits we was getting, y'all, I was not fed. I was not impressed. She did not blow my wig off. I did not move. I just was it um it looked girl. Y'all, I don't count pockets. Okay. Addison Ray. You know your ass got money to put out a high production ass music video with choreo out the waz. Now, why you ain't call Lori Ann Gibson to come in there and give you some boom cats for your life, girl? That's what I want to know. Because it it wasn't giving. Addison, I'm sure she's lovely. I'm sure her and I could really kiki over a good expensive platter at the Boa Steakhouse. But obsessed wasn't it to me. If it was to you, though, go off. Don't let me stop you from listening to it because I wouldn't be surprised. I really think she's going to be on the charts. It's just not for me, you know? Rose said dancing off beat the whole time. You a mess. <laughs> me, e, 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 too. Shout out to her. <laughs> you guys, let me stop dragging Addison. This ain't the dragon show. But that one, I really, that really spoke to my soul because that's real. I couldn't get the words out, but that's how I felt. The video was so underwhelming. I need an Addison Ray to snap my neck with every dance movement. Like a crack, crack. Like a uh, little mix. Remember little mix did the sweet melody and they was going on. That's what I needed from her. I'm gonna let it go. That's fine. Evelyn saying she should have called Charlie. Mm. Yep, she should have had all the best TikTokers from that generation uh, demographic in her video. Yes, she should have. Whew, the script fell. It was so, ugh, the tea was too hot, y'all. I can't do it. But like, <laughs> Let's move on. Not us only on story three. <laughs> Let me start running my mouth. Let's talk about Chris Jenner. <laughs> Let's talk about Chrissy and get Chrissy out of the way because we're still in the first half of the show. Now, you guys know Chris Jenner has her own skincare line and she's offered more details about what's going on with it, when it may be coming out, and what the story is. Now, back in February, she trademarked Chris Jenner Beauty, Chris Jenner Skin, and Chris Jenner Skin Care. And she gave an interview with the Wall Street Journal. And she says, about four or five years ago, I decided to formulate a skincare line. I had some samples made up. So I do have a skincare line that I love that's ready to go. Now, Chris also did mention that she's in no rush to drop the line because obviously things have to be planned out. Um, and her launch will be strategic and happen when the time is right. And she says, a year from now, maybe two. In case you were wondering, y'all, get into that picture I put up there. I just looked up. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what the focus of the line will be. Are y'all ready? Let's get a little drum roll. You guessed it. Chris Jenner's line will be focusing on anti-aging. Okay, so this is what she's saying. I think it's really important for older women to realize that if they just take care of their skin, it's not complicated. So I just did something that emulates exactly what my daily routine is. That will be my line. I'm obsessed with my skin and have always taken really good care of it. I had my first facial when I was a very young girl and just never stopped. Really, it was always a priority. Now, here we go. We got to enter the courtroom on this one. Are you guys interested in the anti-aging secrets of one Miss Chris Jenner? Yes, Chris. No, Chris. Tell me in the chat. If you're watching after, hello to you. Let me know in the comment. Let me know if you're buying Chris Jenner. If you're interested in the anti-aging secrets, let it get her, let's get her ass up there. But the anti-aging secrets of Chris Jenner. Yes, Chris. No, Chris. Tell me in the chizzy, chizzy chat, y'all. Let me know what y'all talking about. <laughs> Fizz Dean is saying another Kardashian beauty line to trick people into buying it. Now, Fizz... I don't disagree, right? Because they are really, really good with marketing. Is it a trick if you're genuinely a fan of Kris Jenner? That's my question. But before we answer that question, let's move on. April, I'll let y'all read that comment off the screen. No, I'll read it. Anti-aging thanks to plastic surgery, LOL. Well, there's that, April. 
Yelly's saying no, Chris. Jesse, ooh, y'all saying nope. Sandra's saying no, because she's had so much plastic surgery. And you know what? I think that that is understandable. Um, if you're going to be a skincare girl, maybe surgery, noticeable surgery, is not the best way to advertise. Maybe, something to think about. We got another no, Chris. George saying, bitch, I figured out the secret. The anti-aging secret is plastic surgery. Look at you. <laughs> George, you done figured it out. Christopher is saying, Botox in a bottle. Sherry is saying, no, Chris, Botox in, in surgery secrets. See, look at y'all. Y'all are best. Who is that? Is that Amanda? Hold on, Amanda. I'm all the way up in the chat. Let me hop to the bottom. Where you at? Okay. Amanda saying she showed Chrissy Teigen her secrets. It's the face pump. Amanda! <laughs> Slap! Y'all better stop because right after this show today, I'm going to go and get my Safely Cleaning products um, so I can tell y'all about them. And I hope that they're not sold out because I'm just remembering, as you said that, that they went live at 9 and it's already 9.42 here. Girl, they probably sold out, but it's fine. Chrissy and Chrissy, send me some Safely. I'm trying to clean my house. Um, <laughs> but Tisha is saying, no, Chris, her anti-aging doesn't come from a bottle. Um, Isamar is saying, Kardashians are better off just giving us discount codes to their doctors. <laughs> Code dash. Y'all a mess, and Jennifer is saying, hard pass. Tegan is saying, it's the same that Chloe did plastic surgery, then came out with a TV show on transformation. I had to take you off the screen. You better, st you better stop acting like Chloe ain't up in the gym every day getting her revenge body. She be on the elliptical, y'all. She be getting her crunches, y'all. She be up in there doing a tie bow like Billy Blanks, girl. At boot camp. Y'all ain't know. But I understand what you guys are saying. If you're going to buy an anti-aging product, you may want an anti-aging product from, I don't know, uh, Michelle Obama, maybe? she She's more mature and very youthful looking. I'll speak for myself. I would rather buy a Michelle Obama, a Beyonce anti if Ivy Park came out. If Beyonce came out with skincare, Ooh, whoa, girl, sign me up, girl, because I'm in there. But wow, hmm, who would y'all buy skincare from, celebrity-wise, because you believe in their values or you like their skin? Who would you buy it from? Hmm, Mr. Makeshift is saying Yara Shahidi. Hmm, maybe. Oh, here we go. Anna is saying it's not all about what you put on your skin as well as what you put in your body. Yes, because your body's a whole, your skin is like an ecosystem. You got to take care of the outside as much as you take care of the inside. I feel you. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. Y'all crazy. Oh, y'all saying Rare Beauty, Rihanna, Selena, Selena. I'm not surprised. Selena. <laughs> Fearless Beauty Queen saying Beyonce, take all my money. I feel that. Mm -hmm. And Mally's agreeing with me. Michelle Obama too. And Bailey is saying, where's that J-Lo glow? Hey, I wouldn't be mad if JLo. JLo's coming out with. Does JLo have skincare? JLo don't have skincare, y'all. JLo, girl, it's time to put the pedal to the metal. We should have been had JLo skincare. Y'all, let's move on from that. Shout out to Amanda saying, Can I get a shout out to my little Colin? It's his fifth birthday today and he's watching with me today. His nickname is Kiki. Hey, Colin, happy fifth birthday. Shout out to you, Amanda. Thank you for joining us all of the time, participating. Colin, you are so, so, so lucky and sending all of my love to little Kiki. Let's blow out the candles, everyone. <laughs> um, But virtually because the panty, you know? <laughs> oh, okay. Evie is getting me together. Get me together. She does have one already. J-Lo Glow. Huh. Maybe I should check into that. I feel like I maybe I talked about that before, but I forgot. J-Lo, you need to be more prominent with your skin business because we don't know you exist. Oh, just came out with hers. Okay, get me together, Fearless Beauty Queen. Okay, enough about skin, because y'all know I'm selfish, and I'll go on about this forever and ever. It's time to shift gears. Shift into turbo for our Power Ranger fans out there. Did you see Demi, y'all? You can be honest if you didn't. You didn't have to. It wasn't homework. You're not going to get uh, participation points taken away from your final grade if you didn't watch Demi. It was heavy. It was heavy. It was a lot. For whatever reason, I thought that I was going to watch some two parts and then go and like have a fruit salad, go for a walk, play some happy music. And it it, it didn't happen for me. Um, so before I get into this, I want to say if you're going to watch Demi's documentary, 
Go into it with an open mind. Go into it in a good mood. And don't have nothing to do after that requires you to be in a good mood. That's my advice. Now, let's get into Miss Demi. If you're one of the people that thought you had heard it all about Demi Lovato's Dancing with the Devil, because literally there was an article coming out with information every single day. Um, I watched the first two episodes, and I have to admit, we were all very, very wrong. Now, she dropped the first two parts, and um, we saw Demi talk about her sobriety, which she struggled with um, in 2018 when she experienced a near-fatal heroin overdose. Now, very quickly, I just want to... Shout out to Amanda. I see you. I see you. I have y'all, um, the chat pulled up. So I see y'all. I don't want to miss no super chest today, man. I'm going to very, not quickly, but I just want to run through a couple of major things that happened. And then you guys, um, you guys go on ahead and let me know what you think. Now, some things that were revealed was Demi was filming another documentary in 2018. She did feel guilt over her father's death. Pageants prompted her struggles with food at a long age. Demi broke her sobriety two weeks after she celebrated six years sober. And then two weeks after that, Demi was introduced to heroin and crack. Um, Demi also revealed that she wrote her ballad sober while on a trip to Bali. And that was after she became physically dependent on heroin. And very quickly, um, something that bothered me, and maybe you guys can offer some insight to this particular moment if you've seen it. Um, they sort of show, they show um, Demi sort of completing her writing sober, performing it, and it's like a round of applause. And I was like, um, I'm uncomfortable. We shouldn't be applauding this. We should be trying to get Demi some help. But um, that's just me. Demi's overdose also made the news before her mom even knew that it happened. So, I mean, it was very, 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 very heavy. And if you're not ready to watch it, I get it. But if you're a Demi Lovato fan, if you're curious, if you want more information, I definitely encourage you to check it out. Um, Sandy Mosher saying... <clears throat> so sad everything she has been through and how bad it really got. Um, and then Sandra is saying, poor girl. Mr. Makeshift is saying, how grim. I agree. I don't know. It's sad. Elva is saying, Demi has definitely had struggles in her past. And then M. Christina is saying, one chapter and couldn't go on. It was, it was very heavy, especially that first one. Um, it was a lot. I think if you guys are ready, I do think that you guys should check it out. Um, I don't know. Dev is saying, I'm not ready to watch it, LOL. Lydia is saying, poor Demi, so sad. Yeah, and you know, something positive about it that I will say is that Demi is very forthcoming with the information. It definitely feels like, well, the truth is, is that Def Demi was holding things back previously. Um, and now it sort of feels like, you know, we're just letting the floodgates open. You know, we got people talking about, oh, we're talking about the heroin. Oh yeah. We're talking about all of it on this one. I feel sad for her, her parents. I feel sad for her just because there's so much there and you never really know all the way what a person is dealing with. And I'm talking about all people, um, celebrities and normal people as well. And to hear, that all of these things were going on definitely gives a little bit of perspective maybe into events that have happened, maybe statements that were made. And I think that it goes way beyond, way beyond. And this is me being honest with you guys. I think that Demi's stuff goes way beyond petty Selena Gomez stuff. That's just me being honest. I think that the, there's a bigger picture here. And although when it comes to humans, there's a huge issue, not an issue, but there's the idea of life and death. I think that Demi was a lot closer to death than we, than we realize. And for me, the constant, as soon as you hear like Demi, Demi was about to die, it was like, well, maybe she should have been nice to Selena. I just think that it's a very immature thing to say at this point today with the information that we have. Um, let's normalize changing or broadening our opinions 
once we have new information. Not saying that she was right or anything that she has done has been right, but I do have a little bit more of an understanding. Now, if you choose not to watch, <laughs> <laughs> After I've given you this information and proceed to run with the petty Selena Gomez stuff, that's fine. And I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Y'all can still do that here. But I'm just letting you know um, how I feel about it. Just saying. Sandra is saying she could have easily died. I agree. Um, Lady Lee J is saying you can't tell all the pain she suffered by looking at her. She looks great. That was something that really shook me as well, was that... Yes, I agree with what you're saying. And then also her friends were saying that she's so good at hiding things. Um, yeah, I agree with that, Lady Lee J. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Kat is saying, I love that she is telling her story and that she has overcome this near-death experience. I appreciate this doc and just, wow, I had no idea. She was legally blind for a while. It is a must watch. I, I agree. I, 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 I. Evelina is saying, what did she do during the Finsta, according to the documentary? We're not talking about the Finsta. <laughs> We're just not. Um, and that's that on that. Vanessa is saying, I agree, she does go beyond, which is why Selena has given nothing but love to her or Selena's side. I'm not talking about Selena right now. Mr. Mishup is saying, Demi does have a lot of internalized that I know of. Well, I don't know. I really felt like... When it came to Demi Lovato, these are the things that I thought I knew. I thought it was just, you know, the eating disorder. And I thought Demi may have had a drinking problem or maybe she popped a couple things here and there. But I think that when you watch it, y'all, it is very explicit and not in the way of like, I'm explicit, like I drop a, a whole bunch of F-bombs throughout the show, but it's explicit in telling you what she was using, how she was using it. The friend saying, girl, I walked in, girl, she had some foil in her hand. Like it is very, very, very um, explicit and detailed. And I think that if you are interested, and also I want to say if you've ever, 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 ever um, known someone or been involved with someone that has had a substance abuse problem, you may see them in the documentary and you may see yourself in the documentary in terms of the friends. You know what I mean? I think that right now, petty bullshit aside involving Selena, and that's not a dig at Selena because y'all know I love Selena, but I mean the topic of it instantly coming up when Demi Lovato's literally dying over here. Um, I think that that is something that I want to support. And the reason why is because I know for a fact that if something were to happen to Demi Lovato, um, permanent, something permanent were to happen to Demi Lovato, the same people in this chat that would that are like, even though as I'm talking about how Demi Lovato almost died, that are like, Selena, 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 they would be the same people that are like, oh my God, that's so sad. Oh my God, that's so sad. Not saying that um, everything Demi Lovato does is right or I agree with, but I do understand the bigger picture. Just saying. Amanda saying, um, my cousin passed because of fentanyl, broke my heart wide open. Exactly, exactly. Um, Barb is saying, yeah, that's why I wanna wait, to be honest. Evelina is saying, so sad for Demi. I agree. And Tegan is saying, preach, Courtney. I'm just saying. Yeah. Emily is saying, you shouldn't brush it away. I'm not asking in a petty way, just curious what headspace she was in. I'm not brushing it away. I'm just saying, when I say the bigger picture, the Finsta is not part of the bigger picture. <laughs> I'm just saying, and that's not a read. I swear, I'm not mad or angry or anything like that. I know when I'm not like being goofy and giggly and hee hee, y'all sometimes perceive that as me being angry. I just wanna make sure that I get my point across because the video gets saved and then people that don't know me watch it and then they form their own opinion um, and then they get upset. So just saying, Mr. Makeshift is saying, y'all, I know too much shit from the radio Disney stars. By the way, so many careers were killed. The record label shut down, by the way. Ooh. Mm. Well, you guys, 
whether you like Demi Lovato or not, I felt the need to share this for people that do watch me and do enjoy Demi Lovato. If you haven't seen the documentary, it is heavy, it is detailed, it is explicit. It's what I perceive to be as honest. If I felt like there were stunty things about it, y'all, I would come right up here and I would tell y'all, believe that. Um, but I don't see a stunt here. I do think that it is important that Demi is finding her own version of help. Um, and I believe that as long as she has her true village around her, she will be all right. Because this is something that she will have to um, fight for the rest of her life. You know, this struggle, you know? So positivity out there for Demi and all of our faves. And uh, let's shift gears into somebody else. I just looked at the script, so I know who's next. Um, <laughs> someone else that you guys absolutely love so much. I'm excited for you. I'm excited to tell the story. Um, literally your favorite person. I, oh my God, I can't wait. Hang on. Um, is that, what is that? Is that Haley B. Is that Haley B? Look at look at how I did that, y'all. I done got some Haley Bieber. Y'all wanna know how Haley Bieber inspired Justin Bieber? <laughs> Let's get into it. Bam! In a new interview with Sirius XM, Justin Bieber opened up about how being with Haley, his wife, inspired one of his new songs off of his album, Justice. Um, now, while talking about the song Unstable, Justin said, I think boundaries for me have been so pivotal in my growth as a human and just my no's being just as powerful as my yeses and knowing when to say no to certain things has been so helpful in my growth. Just, you know, hey, I'm going to turn off at this time. I'm not going to make certain decisions past six o'clock. I'm just going to spend time with my wife, whether it's watching movies or whatever that looks like, but just prioritizing my family and prioritizing like, you know, I never had a consistent family life. It was kind of all over the place growing up. So finally having that predictability and reliability and someone who I love and trust has been so monumental. Now, I know y'all don't care about that, but I want to ask you guys, do you think the reason why Justin goes on and on and on and on and on about Haley and makes the music about Haley and puts out changes and it gives us literally justice, which is Content wise, it's kind of a lot like changes. Do you think that the reason why he does he does all of these things, the overexposing of Haley, is because he hasn't had a stable home life? And so because this is this is his idea of a stable family, he wants to constantly put that on display and be like, look, I'm stable now. What do y'all think? Out of genuine curiosity, when I came to the story, that's what I was thinking. Evelyn was saying, I love my wife. I agree. I mean, it, the whole thing is very much giving. I love my wife. Mr. Makeshift is saying, yummy part two. Got it. Justin, take the album back. <laughs> Wendy is saying, go off, Justin. LMAO, we get it. We get it. I am deceased. April Showers is saying, yes, she and him have been through the ringer. I agree. Um, in terms of with fans and also with me, because I'm very critical of them. Jasmine is saying they are trying to build her brand. I think that... Um, I don't disagree. I don't disagree at all. But I do want to say that, eh, <laughs> Emily is saying possibly our cousin can't talk about his wife with Selena being brought up, even though it does benefit him. Zanley is saying, just stop, Justin. Do y'all not want him to be interviewed? <laughs> Do y'all not want him to be interviewed? Patricia is saying, I think this is very new to him. Structure and Haley both. Maybe. You never know. Fizz is saying he should unrelease that album, LMAO. Here's the thing. I still feel the same way that I feel about Justice as I did when we talked about it when it was released. I do feel like it is not better than Changes still. And I know a lot of people were like, oh. but Changes is as bad as I talked about it, the style of music is more what I enjoyed from Justin than whatever this is. What I wanted to say was Peaches grew on me immensely. And that second song, girl, hold on, let me open up Miss Spotify. This is the second song. Deserve You, ugh. Two best songs in the album and the rest, as of today, is a chop. Bye, you can keep that. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Sandra D saying, uh, yes, definitely building her brand. I agree. I mean, she has a YouTube channel. She's trying to come out with, I think it was like skincare she was trying to come out with. So, I mean, why not? Why not? You're married to Justin Bieber. If you can make your own money separate um, from him, I would do it. Why not? 
Uh, Shabria is saying, I think that makes a lot of sense. I think because he lacks stability, he wants to show it in any way he can. I never made that connection before last night. I was like, hold on. Maybe because Justin's family life when he was younger was just, maybe that's why he's always trying to put on display um, his relationship with uh, Haley. Shout out to Chris Rob. Chris Rob, you watch a lot. Um, I want to say shout out to you. I love you. Honestly, I love your opinions. You have a lot of opinions about uh, Selena and Taylor. I just wanted to say shout out to you. I see you and I love you. There are more super chats. Hang on, y'all. I'm scrolling. I'm sc oh, I see you, Cat. Hi, Cat. Cat is here. I see you. Bam. I appreciate you. And um, thank you for watching. Am I missing any other super chats, y'all? Let me know, y'all. I don't want to miss it. Okay. What you saying, Vanessa? <laughs> Vanessa is saying, I think his marriage has been damage control from all of his crazy wildlife tabloids from the very soon years before their marriage. And he's trying to repair his image still. I think at this point, the majority of people that like Justin Bieber and don't care about the stand stuff, like Justin Bieber just for Justin Bieber now, a lot of people have forgotten a lot of that stuff. Um, to be truthful and to be candid and honest, I bring it up, but a lot of people don't remember that. Um, but yeah, I don't think that at this particular point, Justin would marry specifically Haley Bieber for damage control. I think that if he were trying to marry for damage control, he would have just married anyone. Remember when Justin was like, he wasn't with her, but maybe he dated her for like a week or something. That girl from Bad Girls Club, he would have like married someone like her or something like that, you know? Just, just an opinion. What you saying, Camarino? Camarino saying, but it is terrible that you base all your stability in one person. That's codependency, not love. And you know what? I don't disagree with that. What I do feel like, ugh, about was that he worded it how he worded it because that, how else are we supposed to perceive that? You know what I mean? We are, if you read what he said, then it does come across like that. But if she wants to take care of him, I can't be mad at her for that because y'all aren't, right? I'm just saying. If his mama don't want to be there for him, I'm not saying that she she doesn't, but like if she's not going to be in the house with him every day and she loves him and he loves her and she said, I'm going to take care of you while you go out and get this bread, um, I'm not mad at that because that's keeping the money, that's keeping the money coming into the house. If she doesn't take care of him, I mean, also, isn't the wife supposed to take care of the husband? Isn't the wife supposed to be? Wife and husband supposed to be your stability? Just asking. I'm not married. I don't know. But I'm just asking. I don't know. What you saying, Kate? Kate is saying Justin can keep his album and his interviews. <laughs> well, I don't think we're going to stop getting Justin interviews anytime soon. But uh, I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> um, Gabriella is saying, I think Justin just needs more time to pass before filing for divorce. Okay, here's the thing with that. If Justin and Haley were going to divorce, it certainly would not, and this is me agreeing with you, Gabriella. Um, it certainly would not be during Justice's album cycle. It certainly wouldn't be during the beginning of Haley drop, like beginning her YouTube career. And it certainly wouldn't be after um, her like talking about the skincare line and stuff like that. It would be way down the line, and we wouldn't hear about them for months. We would just they would just pop up with we're getting a divorce. Dejanae is saying, what is this? Dejanae, this is the Green Chair Chats. We're talking about celebrities and pop culture here. Welcome. Mr. Makeshift is saying, that's just how Hollywood works. Hey, you might not be wrong, but we're not done talking about the Beavers, but we're dropping one. We're talking about just Justin now. And we're talking about this because Justin, <laughs> Justin done took his ass to jail. Y'all, how that happened? He done took his ass to jail. Now, according to TMZ, Justin's huge RV was spotted yesterday. Well, not yesterday, Tuesday. Is it this one? What day is it, y'all? This one's yesterday outside of the California State Prison of LA County. TMZ searched around and eventually confirmed Justin and his pastor had stopped by the facility to support its faith based programs. Now, the, the, the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation was able to confirm Justin's visit, but did not provide details on what exactly went down, but did make sure to note that all COVID-19 safety measures were taken. 
Interesting, interesting, interesting. I want to say shout out to Josephina saying, love you rebels, happy hump day. You the best core. No, you the best, Josephina. Thank you um, for joining us today. Everyone say hello, 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 hello to Josephina. But yeah, Justin showed up at prison and um, I was very shocked. I was very surprised. I was like, what is Justin doing at a prison? Could you imagine being at prison? And I know a lot of you will say no, me included. But could you imagine being in prison and all of a sudden you go out uh, to eat a little breakfast in the pod, a little apple or a little uh, prison loaf or something or whatever they make in, in the prisons. Um, and Justin show up with a pastor talking about this little light of mine. Could you imagine that? Just to get up there in the pod and eat this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. I couldn't. I couldn't. I would be like, put me back in the cell. Um <laughs> Mr. Makeshift is saying, oh, okay, Justin want to post bail or help everyone vaccinate? Literally, literally. Emily is saying, he better not use it for footage. Now, I feel like, Emily, if there were cameras, we may have heard about it, but you never know. You never know. Um, I hope he doesn't use it for footage either. Or like a music video. I hope we don't need that. Um, I don't know. Jenna, wait, I want to read Jennifer. Jennifer is saying, so much for consistency with this dude. He's rolling out with Jesus Juice in jails and singing about weed and bitches in his music. I right, brah. He's rolling out with Jesus Juice in jails. Did I say that? Did I say he went to the jail and had some Jesus Juice? Um, I also want to say that singing about weed and loving God are not, you, you, you can do that. You, you, you can love God and, and hit a joint. That's not, you're not going to hell for, I just, I'm just saying. Um, and as for the bitches thing, um, in terms of peaches and the bitches, because I'm exhausted of this. Um, I know a lot of people were upset that Justin Bieber called Haley a bad, bit, bad ass bitch in peaches. And to that, I just want to say, guys, respectfully, and y'all know I love you, if Haley had a problem with being called a badass bitch, which is a compliment in most circles. Um, Justin wouldn't sing it. I'm just, I just want to throw that out there. If Haley didn't want to be called a badass bitch, as much as he's dependent on y'all, y'all said it, and he said in an article, he wouldn't be saying it. So it's not an issue. And um, if Haley's not saying it's an issue, then I don't take an issue with it at all. I'm, ju I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Holly, is, Holly is saying, thank you, Courtney. I agree. Um, <laughs> Mr. Major said, is it Haley a badass? I, just, I didn't see the issue with that one. That was the thing that I was like, if, if, if he's calling her a badass, but she obviously would have been like, well, Justin, don't call me that. And then he would have put something else there. You know, it's not that big of a deal. Um, <laughs> Christina is saying, I ain't never letting my husband ever call me a bitch in any scenario. And Christina, that's you and that's okay. Um, I also want to point out that your husband could be calling you a bitch and you just don't know about it. And that's just the tea. That's just the truth. Um, you don't know what goes on when you're not around. And that's not a negative thing. I'm just saying um, it's different. Every relationship is different. Justin's relationship, marriage with Haley. He can call her a badass bitch and she gonna be like, ow. You know, just saying. <laughs> and now, how <laughs> come Tegan said, Haley probably wrote that part of the song. <laughs> Imagine if she did, people as bad as Haley wrote that part of the song. I would be dead. Okay, y'all. <laughs> Y'all know I'm silly. Right? I love this. I really, really do. And I love you guys. I want to say shout out to Amanda. I see you. Shout out to Amanda. Amanda's reminding everyone, if you're watching and if you're ready to get into Taylor Swift, because that's next, if you're ready to get into Taylor Swift, um, first, give this video a thumbs up. Make sure that you're subscribed to give this video a thumbs up. And for Taylor... We are going to still do Black Hearts because my favorite Taylor album is Reputation. So if you're ready to get into the double Taylor news, put some Black Hearts in the chat. I'll take a little sippy sip and then a little dippy dip into this tea. Hold on. Mmm. Oh, yeah. That was tasty. Katie said, yeah, Miss Taylor. I see you, Kate. Oh, we got it. Oh, I see you. Bam. Bam. Bam, let me click on Ava. Okay.
let's talk about Taylor. Let's talk about Taylor and Taylor's mom. Shout out to um Miss Andrea. Andrea Swift. Andrea Swift. Shout out to her. Okay, you guys. Taylor Swift has come to the aid of another family affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Taylor and her mother jointly donated the total goal amount of a GoFundMe appeal for Vicky Quarles, a mother of five daughters who was widowed after her husband, Theodis Ray Quarles, died of COVID just one week before Christmas. Now, the GoFundMe was actually created by a friend named Daquanda Smith, and she said she created the page because I decided um, to launch this, an initiative in support of Vicky and her girls to offer financial relief and reduce their family's worry from things, as well as for their continued growth. I am confident that their father, Theodis Ray Quarles, will be smiling from heaven when his little teacher, doctor, CEO, nurse, or entrepreneur makes her mark in the world. Y'all, when you hear stories or when you hear the phrase, something done from the heart, this is the kind of story that you think about. You think of Taylor Swift and her mom uh, swigging a glass of wine. This is what I imagine. Swigging a, a glass of wine around and they just scrolling through GoFundMe. It's like, girl, okay, who bills we going to pay today? And Taylor's like, oh, well, this family, you know, lost a lot and this family lost a lot. And, you know, they just make an agreement and they just pay it. And I like that she just does this. You know, Taylor Swift does get a lot of flack for doing this. A lot of people say that she does it for attention, which I think is like the dumbest shit ever. Why would Taylor just give it to people for attention? She's literally rich as hell and could mind her business in a castle forever. Um, and I just want to say shout out to Positive News. We did speak about Kylie Jenner getting in our broke asses, talking about mind your own wallets, mind your own business, and just the contrast. Just the contrast. No hate about Kylie, but just the contrast in what you could choose to do with your money. Um, yeah, what would you what would you guys, what is one thing you would do if you had an endless amount of money? If you had an endless amount of money, what would be the first thing that you spend it on or buy for someone else? Not for yourself, but what would you do for someone else? Um, that's what I'm curious about. Shout out to Camarino. Finally was able to see this live. Watching you from Barcelona, Spain. I love you, Court. You're the best. Shout out to Spain, Camarino. Woo oh my God. Shout out to you. I gotta get out to Barcelona, y'all. Y'all know I love the Cheetah Girls, too. You better strive like you mean it. Hey, free your mind. It's not enough just to dream it. Come on. Come on. Don't make me get on the phone with Raven because we need another movie. <laughs> Shout out to you, Camarino. <laughs> um, Light Dose of Caramel Dulce, thank you so much for returning. Thank you for that super chat earlier. Um, saying, uh, I just want to say, Court, that I press like on your videos before I press play on it. The likes are for you, not for no one else that you talk about on your show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you guys, I know that you're being honest because... In other places, in the analytics, it's just a little bit of YouTube tea, and then I'll get back into Taylor. Um, in the analytics, in other places, it will always show like what y'all are searching to find my channel or to find my videos. Um, in other places, it would be, you know, Selena Gomez or Justin Bieber or Ariana Grande. And what a delight and how soft it makes me when I go in my analytics and I see it's like 70% of people just looking up Courtney Revolution. If I were white, I'd blush. I love y'all the pieces. I just wanted to say that. Um, and thank you, um, Light Dose of Caramel. Uh, okay, y'all. Let's get into this. Oh, this is the GoFundMe, just in case y'all didn't believe me. Um, y'all saw uh, Taylor her mama, right? That's that good music coin, okay? But let's move on to something a little bit more exciting. Bam! Taylor has been re-recording her albums, and the one that is coming first will be Fearless next month. But before Taylor drops another iconic record, she wanted to share just one of the six vault songs that will be dropping before the album. Now, Taylor announced on Instagram that the new track will be released Thursday at midnight, and it's called You All Over Me from The Vault. And Taylor also revealed that country star Marin Morris supplies background vocals on the song. So Taylor is saying, hi, I just wanted to let you know that the, the first from The Vault song I'm releasing from Fearless, Taylor's version, comes out tomorrow at midnight Eastern. It's called You All Over Me from The Vault. 
One thing I've been loving about these From the Vault songs is that they've never been heard, so I can experiment, play, and even include some of my favorite artists. I'm really excited to have Marin Morris singing background vocals on this song, produced by Aaron Desner and co-written by Scooter Car Caruso. Can't wait for you to hear it. Now, we know that Taylor loves her some Marin Morris, and just to be clear, I love Marin Morris as well, and I'm gonna tell you why. Um, I'm one of those people that says, I love Marin Morris and I literally only know the middle. And honestly, that's enough for me. Marin, girl, your whole career to me, not a country uh, stand, is the middle. And I'm just like, I will give her a award today off the middle. The middle is still a bop. So I'm excited to hear this. Marin also was on Taylor's Reputation Stadium tour. She popped up on a date back in 2018. Um, are y'all excited? Is this the collab that y'all want? Hmm. What y'all want to hear? I see you, Fizz saying, yes, you all over me, release tomorrow. Um, Sandy is saying, I love them both, very excited for this. Uh, I see you, aw. Ooh, Mr. Makeshift is questioning, wait, I wonder when she wrote this, was she mean? Hmm, I don't know, we'll have to see. Sandra is saying, yes, very excited. I'm excited too. Um, we know that Taylor doesn't do a whole lot of features like that, like that. So I, I'm the kind of person I like to hear Taylor's voice. Like I want to hear it with something else, you know, like remember when she did, and this may not be like your most favorite Taylor thing ever, but I loved, um, I don't want to live forever with Zane. Mm, I'm about to play that after the show is over. That was actually a sleeper hit that I feel like the girls didn't give enough attention, enough love to. But I mean, it's Taylor. She's gonna blow it out of the water. I'm I'm not um I'm not feeling like she's not going to deliver, you know? <laughs> Mr. Makeshift is saying everyone Marin made a house and you built the bones. Period. Nicole is saying anything, Taylor. Yes, yes, and yes. Woo! Mr. Makeshift is saying Zane eight. Okay. Okay, Zane know how to get it done. Fizz is saying, can't wait to hear it because some Swifties had already heard it before, but that was in 2011 though. Can't wait to hear the newer version with Aaron Desner, the collaborator for Folklore and Evermore. So, I mean, we're already gonna get, if you've heard this before, maybe it leaked or what have you, we're gonna get a whole new version of this and how special it will be to sort of have had an idea of what it sounded like back then and now 10 years later, oh. Taylor, she she always delivers like pizzas, and that is why we love her. That is why I stand. Um, Emily is saying, "Who's who's is she collabing with? She's collabing with um, Marin Morris. Why don't you just meet me in the middle? The year that song came out, y'all, me and my friends played that out. As a matter of fact, when we all get vaccinated, my friends finally come into my house, y'all. We're gonna play the middle to separate. I literally haven't seen my friends in an entire year. I need that Pfizer. I need the Pfizer." But uh, speaking of shots, thank you guys so much for uh, joining me in your shot of Courtney for today. <laughs> it's been a great show. I love you guys. I had all the feels today. I'm glad that we had great discussion. Um, and just know that I love you even if we disagree. It's, it's, it's not a thing. It's just a show. But I love you. Know that. Um, follow me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Um, I have my podcast, My Best Friend Felicia, called Over in the Pantry, down in the description box below. We're actually recording a new episode today. Bam. So become an eavesdropper. Meet us in the pantry. And uh, don't you forget that the world keeps spinning. And so shall you. And I'll see you guys tomorrow, 9, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you guys for all the super chats and all the love. Stay safe. Put your mask on. Wash your hands. And uh, I'll see you guys later.